Hi, my name is David Bruce. So earlier this week, I had the culmination of a project that was something quite different for me. There are always various kinds of interesting challenges you get as a composer. And one that was new to me was writing for a chorus of very young amateur singers. So these were kids aged between 8 and 12 who were, you know, just ordinary school kids. They didn't have any particular musical knowledge. The commission came from this charity in the UK, the Voices Foundation, whose whole purpose is to encourage kids to sing. And just from the experience of this project, I can see that the musical wisdom you gain from learning how to sing in a choir at this age is just huge. <laughs> And I think the connection you get is so direct, it must have an enormous impact on your musical development. But also, of course, on other kinds of development like social skills, communication, listening and so on. Now, you might think that to write for a group like this would be one of the easiest things in the world. But it turns out it's incredibly difficult and it's an extremely subtle art. Yes, you have to write music that's quite simple and not too complicated in its rhythms or pitches. But I also came away with the sense that just the tiniest missteps and misplacements of certain notes can result in something that's either impossible for them to sing or at least doesn't come across with its full potential. And although I was happy with my finished piece, I fully concede that as it was my first attempt, there were some things that I could have done differently. the concert I did not only the new piece but also some arrangements. They asked for a series of folk songs from around the world and I collaborated with Charles McDougall who was conducting the concert and we selected a bunch of different pieces on the theme of home. And I think the one I was most proud of out of the arrangements was this song that my wife had introduced me and our kids to from her native Poland. It's called Hey Sokowy and it's a song sung by a Ukrainian soldier who's missing his girl in his homeland. I even managed to do my own translation of the words. It has a very nice minor melody which I've heard set as both a slow lament and as a much more upbeat, energetic sort of drinking song. I think my version's somewhere in between, but I think what particularly gets the kids on side is the chorus of hey, clap, hey, clap which is the equivalent of a hook in a pop song, I suppose. It gets their attention and it stays in their memory along with the tune. And it was hugely satisfying for me to see how engaged the kids got with this particular tune. They just knew it backwards and it sounded great musically. The conductor Charles also put me onto some really well-written pieces for this kind of group, which gave me a few ideas. Here's one by the master of the genre, Benjamin Britten. One of the most common techniques is the canon, where the chorus is split in two and the second part sings the same melody a few beats behind the first. This works well because the kids only have one idea to learn, but if it's done cleverly it can build up some quite powerful counterpoint. One of the arrangements which I didn't manage to record from our set is a Hebrew song called Hashivenu, which does this extremely well. And one issue with the canon is that it's quite a challenge to make the opening statement sound interesting. It's funny that Nari Sol put out a great video about loop pedals the other day, which I've been experimenting with a bit myself. And she mentioned how some ideas are good by themselves, whereas others are sort of good for looping. I was starting to notice the difference between musical ideas that sound good on their own when heard once versus ideas that sound good looped and certain musical ideas are appropriate for this and certain musical ideas aren't. And it's a similar story here. Many of the canon songs I've heard for kids chorus start off sounding a little bit bare before the overlap of the canons kicks in. It's a tricky problem to get round. Here's another really great piece for the genre by Jonathan Dove. When it's sung at the start in unison there's plenty of variety and interest in the line the choir sings but a couple of the repetitions do sound a little bare by themselves. But 
it's only when the cannon kicks in that the piece really lifts off and you get this amazing interlocking, overlapping texture which builds up quite powerfully. So as you can see from these examples, by no means does the tone have to be too soft or, or light. And the Voices Foundation explicitly told me they didn't want anything too sentimental. They wanted something with a bit of meat that would hopefully get the kids thinking. At the same time, they wanted something that felt like what they called a contemporary folk song. So I straight away felt the words would be the hardest part of it. So I called up my friend and regular collaborator, Glenn Maxwell, and he came up with this simple but perfectly ambiguous little song, the song of Until, which everyone agreed really captured the, the kind of feeling we were after. There's a sort of sense of unity and warmth, but it's not at all sentimental. And I also settled on using a solo harp to accompany. They gave me a free choice. And well, I'm a big fan of the harp anyway, and it has this great advantage of not drowning the choir out at all. You can hear both elements really vividly. Neither one ever drowns the other one out. It's a really great mixture. Charles also gave me a very useful list of criteria in terms of singing. He's a very experienced practitioner working in classroom with kids of this kind of age. So he was able to tell me precisely what would and wouldn't work. And of course it was up to me how far I attempted to push those limits. It's worth bearing in mind that the performance you'll hear at the end of the video was the first day all 10 schools involved had sung together. They had the afternoon rehearsal and then the concert. So anything more extreme I attempted in terms of difficulty level was always gonna be dangerous. For example, one idea that I think Charles did warn me about was the difficulty of getting one part of the chorus to hold a note while the other moves away from it. You can actually see in the video Charles using this gesture to try and keep one side on their note while the other moves. So I did risk that particular idea and you can hear it's something that is within the kids' capabilities. They also said that I should try and use the full range up to the high E, which is roughly the highest you should go. And they specifically warn me against using only the lower range because it's good for the kids vocally to open up their lungs and try and use some of those higher notes. And again, you could see that they could do it, but certainly holding that high note was quite challenging. And certainly holding it softly, as I wrote at the end of the score, was definitely quite challenging as well. One other thing which can cause problems is making any slight changes to a repeating pattern. Unfortunately, this is something I tend to do quite a lot in my music, something that sounds like a repetition, but it's actually slightly different. So at the end of Song of Until, the phrase that had repeated is suddenly held for longer in the middle, which never failed to catch one or two of the pupils off guard, bless them. So overall, I really loved doing this project and I would love to write more for this kind of age. I think from everything I've learned, next time I'll nail it twice as good. So I've decided to set up a second channel where I'm gonna put anything that might not be a full video like this that still some people might be interested in. So it might include some full performances of my pieces or just little fun projects that I've been working on. So that's just called David Bruce Composer 2 or DBC2, get it? So if you really can't get enough David Bruce Composer, then sign up there and there'll be odd weird things coming out on that from time to time. And I'll include a full performance of Song of Until on there separately. Thanks so much for watching and thanks as ever to my patrons on Patreon for supporting the channel. And I'll see you next time.
Thank you.